Everything is bigger in Texas, and that includes state pride here on the Tech Campus. Coming up, we'll show you how Red Raiders had a chance to show off their Lone Star love and enjoy some Texas-themed treats. The university centennial celebration is officially over, but before it all came to an end, Red Raiders stepped up to accomplish an enormous goal. Find out how more than 50,000 members of Texas Tech community made a huge impact in 2023. And the Texas Tech men's basketball team was back in action only a day after making another jump in the national polls. But could the Red Raiders continue their winning streak in the Metroplex? MCTV's Trinity Boudreaux will have a recap of the game along with a preview of another busy weekend for Tech Athletics and Sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Eleni Hadishvili. And I'm Luke Johnson. Texas residents are often known for their state pride, and students here at Texas Tech are no exception. Earlier today, one campus group decided to give Red Raiders a chance to show their love for the Lone Star State during a special event. Texas Day kicked off this morning at 11 a.m. in the sub courtyard. The celebration was organized by the Student Activities Board and included free refreshments, giveaways, and plenty of Texas pride. Attendees could grab a goodie bag, enjoy a Dr. Pepper float, and put together a miniature Texas flag to show off their love for the state. Texas Day was free and open to all students with a Tech ID. Today also marked the first event of SAB's schedule for the month of February, which also includes a Valentine's Day event, a free movie at the Stars and Stripes drive-in, and a chance to show off your canvas painting skills. To view SEP's full schedule for the semester, visit seb.ttu.edu and click on the Spring Activity Calendar link near the bottom of the page. Texas Tech is made up of a diverse collection of cultures and people groups from around the world. Each week, many students share their culture with fellow Red Raiders in group meetings and activities that take place all across campus. Last night, the Chinese Language and Culture Association hosted their weekly Chinese Tea House gathering in room 114 in the CMLL building. Last night's meeting focused on Chinese paper cutting and attendees had the chance to create a Chinese character and a dragon. The Chinese Tea House meets each Wednesday and any student is invited to stop by and learn about Chinese culture and traditions through a series of fun and free activities. This uh, program aims to offer our students the experience about the Chinese culture and increase their interest in learning Chinese culture and Chinese language at Texas Tech University. Tech's Chinese Language and Culture Association has a full schedule of activities planned for the spring semester, including a karaoke night, a Chinese game day, and a bubble tea festival. Next week's meeting is set for 5 p.m. in CMLL 114, and attendees will have the chance to learn how to write Chinese couplets. For more information on all the activities taking place this semester, visit facebook.com slash ttu.chinese.language. At the end of the last semester, Tech's Tech System officially marked the conclusion of the university's centennial celebration during the 65th Annual Carol of Light Ceremony. But even after the event concluded, Red Raiders continued to mark the historic occasion by giving back to the community until the end of the semester. Starting last January, Texas Tech officials encouraged all members of the university community to give off their time to reach a monument monumental goal, 1 million volunteer hours during the centennial year. Throughout 2023, a series of emails and social media posts asked Red Raiders to give back to their local communities and then report their hours to the university. A final call for volunteer hours was sent out in December with the hope of reaching the goal. Then last month, the university sent out a press release announcing that the final tally exceeded 1 million hours, with a total of more than 1.1 million hours reported by faculty, staff, students and alumni. Overall, more than 50,000 Red Raiders volunteered in some way during the centennial year. Red Raiders who reported volunteer hours were identified by their graduation year, major, and any organizations they were affiliated with. The top groups who gave the most hours included the 1968 graduating class, students who attended Tech in the 1960s, Red Raiders who were associated with the School of Law, and the Association of Bangladeshi Students and Scholars. The end of the month of January featured a lot warmer conditions than the near zero degree temperatures students faced at the beginning of the semester. 
So will these spring-like conditions continue into February? Weather specialist Elizabeth Herring has a look at what we can expect for the first weekend of the month in the MCTV forecast. Elizabeth? Yes, so here in the South Plains, we have seen quite a warm week. It looks like that trend is going to continue. However, we could see some wind and rain to end off our January season. Yesterday, we saw a high temperature of 67 degrees. Definitely a very warm temperature for this time of year. Not quite high or high of 84, but it looks like we are only going to get warmer today here in the South Plains. Highs in the 70s across the area. Snyder, 75. Plainview, 71. Turkey, 76. Definitely some warm spring-like temperatures for the area. We will see some rain later this week. That chance is going to happen Friday afternoon right around 5. You can see some rain moving up into the area, but it looks like that won't last very long. By the end of Friday night, we should see clear skies. However, Saturday is going to bring some high winds to the South Plains. That's really going to begin Saturday morning. We could see gusts in the South Plains area, 20 and 30 miles per hour. Definitely a windy day outside Saturday, and that will continue a little bit into Sunday. But by Monday, that wind should completely taper off. Tonight in the South Plains, 40s across the area. Some places seeing 50, Snyder 50, Plainview 42. A cool night, so if you're headed out, be sure to bring a jacket with you. But again, no freezing temperatures for the South Plains. Tomorrow, highs in the 70s and 60s, definitely, again, a warm day, a little bit cooler than what we saw today. Um, Plainview, 65, Snyder, 73, again, some warm temperatures, and we do have that chance of rain tomorrow. Looking here locally tonight in Lubbock, we have a high of 40, or low of 47 degrees. Again, a cool night, but no chances of rain tonight. Tomorrow, high of 68, another warm day for the South Plains with some rain towards the end of the afternoon. Looking at our weekend, Saturday, again, that's when our wind's going to start to move throughout the area. High of 61 on Saturday, a little bit cooler. Sunday, we are going to get just a few degrees cooler with a high of 59. And again, that wind will continue a little bit into Sunday, but as we move into Monday, that wind should completely taper out. Monday, high of 60. Tuesday, we warm up again with a high of 67. Wednesday and Thursday, high in the mid-60s. Friday is Groundhog Day, and whether or not he sees his shadow, it looks like we are headed for an early spring. We've had warm temperatures this week, and it looks like that trend is going to continue into the beginning of our February month. I'm Elizabeth, and it's back to y'all. Thanks, Elizabeth. Red Raider basketball has been making headlines after spending several weeks at the top of the Big 12 standings and moving up in the national polls. The team has already faced tough competition, meeting up with four top 25 ranked opponents since Big 12 play started last month. So could the Red Raiders take down another top 25 team on the road? MCTV's Trinity Boudreau joins us now with the latest scores and highlights in sports. Trinity? Thank you, LNA and Luke. The number 15th ranked Texas Tech men's basketball team went on the road to Fort Worth to go up against the number 25 ranked TCU Horned Frogs Tuesday night. Going into the game, senior Chance McMillan received the Big 12 Newcomer of the Week after scoring a career-high 27 points against Oklahoma last Saturday. The Scarlet and Black were standing at 16-3 overall and 5-1 and in conference play, while TCU was 15-5 overall and 4-3 and in the Big 12. Sadly, Texas Tech fell to TCU 78-85. The Red Raiders had an 11-point lead in the first half, but had a rough time holding on to it as TCU gained the lead back 40-36 at the end of the first half. By the second half, Texas Tech caught back up and reduced TCU's lead to 48-47, but it wasn't enough as TCU took the win 78-85 in the final. Pop Isaacs led the team in points with 25. Chance McMillan and Isaacs led the team with five three-pointers apiece, and lastly, Joe Toussaint and Isaacs each hit four three free throws. Isaacs now has scored more than 20 points in six games this season and eight in his career. He also leads the Big 12 with 20.3 points in conference games. Next up, Red Raiders men's basketball, now 16-4 and 5-2, and and will host Cincinnati, who are 14-6 and 3-4 and and for the first time ever. The Red Raiders are hoping to keep their undefeated home record of 11-0 alive. The game will be Saturday at 5 p.m. in the United Supermarkets Arena. 
Also in basketball news, the later Raiders hosted the TCU Horn Frogs at the United Supermarkets Arena last Saturday afternoon and ended up with the win 71 to 65. Four Lady Raiders scored double digits, which is the second time in conference play for Texas Tech. Now, the Scarlet and Black are 16 and 6 overall and 5 and 4 in the Big 12, and the TCU Horn Frogs are 15 and 5 and 2 and 5 in Big 12 play. The TCU women's team has had a rough season with injuries, having to forfeit games and having to hold open tryouts to keep the season going. Jasmine Shavers led Tech with 19 points with one three-pointer and eight free throws. Next up, the Lady Raiders are going onto the road to Ohio to go up against the Cincinnati Bearcats, who are 10 and 10 overall and 2 and 7 in the Big 12. Tip-off is set for Saturday at 1 p.m. Next, the number one ranked men's track team and number 13 women's team are in Manhattan, Kansas to compete in the Delos Dodds Invitational from today to Saturday. After an amazing last weekend in Louisville, the Red Raiders are hoping to continue that record and hold on and move up in the rankings. Lastly, the Kansas City Chiefs are headed to Super Bowl 58 with the help of Texas Tech legend Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs beat the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC Championship last Sunday 17-10 to get their ticket to a fourth Super Bowl appearance in five years. The Chiefs will go up against the San Francisco 49ers Sunday, February 11th with a kickoff at 5.30 on CBS. That's all for Texas Tech Sports. Now back to LNA and Luke. Thanks, Trinity. Students with access to a kitchen often have a chance to showcase their culinary skills while sharing a familiar meal with friends or roommates. And if that meal happens to involve a recipe that reminds you of home, one university group is asking for your help. The Office of Parent and Family Relations is currently looking for submissions to help create a Red Raider family cookbook. The cookbook will include a collection of family recipes sent in by the university community. Students and their families, along with staff, faculty, and alumni are all invited to contribute to the future publication. Participants are asked to fill out a form including their information, the recipe, and a short story explaining why it means something to them. The final collection will then be made available to the university community. If you have a beloved family recipe that you would like to submit, visit Parent and Family Relations Linktree at linktr.ee slash ttupfr and click on the Red Raider Family Cookbook link. So, Luke, do you have a special family recipe you might submit for the cookbook? I think I got an idea. Uh, I got a lot of Ohio family members, and uh, they like to make uh, Buckeye, the little peanut butter balls. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I might submit that into the Red Raider Cookbook. How about you? I'm from the country of Georgia, and we have this Ajari Khachapuri. It's from my region. It's basically a cheese bread, so I think I'm going to go with that. Very nice. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.